Okay, Kristen. Purely grounded here. Tired. Tired Kristen. Are you? Should be. Means you're working hard outside. I planted a bunch of fall seed today. <laughs> so excited. And because it's so hot in the deep south, there's certain things that I do to protect my seed and ensure germination. First of all, I use my high raised bed as, well, this is multifunctional because I can use it as a seed starting table and it will also, I don't have to bend over, which is awesome. And then it will be the permanent growing space as well. So what I do, I reuse containers. These are old salad green containers, put holes in them. And then I like to use flats. I used to, you know, when I first started gardening, I would only use the cell trays, you know, the, the cells with the three, six, is it three, six, three, four, and six, I think. So they make the cells. It doesn't matter. But the longer I gardened, the more fun I, I had with it and the more liberal I was with it. And uh, so now I just kind of put a whole bunch of, let me show you. So now I make my own potting mix. You can buy yours from the store, doesn't matter. I want all my stuff organic, which you can buy potting soil, organic potting soil. So I will put my potting mix in the flat or the container, whatever I'm using. And then I will sprinkle the seed throughout the whole thing. Then I will put more soil mix on top of that and then I'll water it. And then I like to stack them. So there's flats underneath there. There's more containers underneath this container. So what I do is I have, so they're stacked and then I water them and then I cover them with the burlap. The burlap is great because it provides shade for the soil and it also helps retain moisture. And when you're starting seeds, you, they can't dry out. That can, that can have a negative impact on the, on the germination. So I do that, and since I did stack them, you know, I have to keep an eye out because once they do germinate, once they're popping up, I have to remove them so they can get sun and also I don't want them squashed. So it's my seed starting table and it's my, my permanent bed. And the permanent bed is all ready to go. It's already got all the soil mix in there. So when the babies get to the stage where I want to go ahead and transplant them out, it's all ready. That's one of the, that's one of the keys to success, to success when you're gardening is if you're, if you're doing a lot of stuff, you want to have your permanent space ready to go so you don't get overwhelmed because all of a sudden when you have tons of seeds popping up and and you have to get your space ready at the same time it's hustle bustle it can take take away the fun so it does for me anyway so I like to have it ready so I get excited when my seeds pop up I don't stress about you know, oh, I gotta have a space for them. And then I get excited when the they get their baby leaves and then I get excited when they get their true leaves because then I can translate them out and, and it's ready to go. So it's fun, have fun. So I'll water them and then I have, um, I, for this bed, I put some plastic roofing down and and I just put a couple holes in it and so I just catch the water where the holes are with containers and then I, I pour it back in. I like to be su sufficient and I, and I really love the rainwater for my stuff so yeah that's why I plan a lot of stuff uh I'm starting earlier and earlier see how far I can push it I started a couple broccolis um turnip greens bok choy even what else 
couple kills. Gotta, gotta start the kill. Ah. Um, what do we do? We got oh, arugula, a couple of the broccoli, oh, some squash. Yeah, and then and then the different kills. Yeah, so get started and have fun with it and try to stay ahead of it so that it's it's more chill during the hustle. Hey, you have a great night. See ya. Oh, come see this. I love these things. So this is our melon cantaloupe watermelon squash bed so these beauties i love these so much but we didn't label them so we don't know what they're called but they're it's a type of cantaloupe but it doesn't get any bigger than this and i know that only <laughs> because we've already harvested some but this the, this color is so pretty. It's such a pretty green. But it's going to turn yellow and then a light orange. And that's how you know it's ready. That baby right there. See how it's turning yellow? I wish so bad I could remember the name of this. I'm sure I could figure it out looking it up. But. So it starts to turn yellow, then has those green strips. And that's when you gotta keep an eye on it. Because after those green strips, it's going, those are all gonna go away. And then the whole thing is gonna turn yellow and then an orange. And at that point it's ready. And we realize that we have to get it right when it turns that light orange, when the whole thing is this light orange, because after that, it splits easily, and then the critters come in and take the rest out. But yeah, I love them. I love those things. That Malabar spinach, though. How fun is that? Okay, for real this time. See ya.